Hello, my name is Helen Rennie and today I'll show you how to grill meat. We'll be grilling a T-bone steak, but the same technique applies to grilling any tender cut of beef, lamb, veal or pork. Let's scrip the grill clean with a metal brush and cover the section of the grill we plan to use with a piece of foil. The foil will reflect the heat, resulting in a significantly hotter grill grate. Let's turn the grill on and go prep our meat. Leaving a large fat cap on the meat will lead to flare-ups, so I prefer to trim most of it. Moisture is the enemy of browning. So before we cook, we need to dry our meat with paper towels. Let's coat the steak with a thin film of oil on both sides. Now let's sprinkle it with salt and pepper. You should only start salting when the grill has reached its maximum temperature. Otherwise, the salt will make the surface of the meat wet and bye-bye go grill marks. An even better option is to salt the meat a day or two before cooking. It will be more evenly seasoned and juicier. Just don't forget to dry it and lightly oil it before you cook. Remove the foil covering the grill. Hold an oiled paper towel with tongs and wipe the grill a few times. This seasons your grill and makes it non-stick. It's the same principle as seasoning a cast iron skillet. Place the meat diagonally to the grill grates and cover the grill. After one and a half minutes, check for grill marks. If they look good, flip the meat keeping the same orientation on the grill. In other words, if my meat was positioned bottom left to top right, I'll keep it that way. Cover the grill and wait another minute and a half for the other side to brown. Check for grill marks and flip the meat again, this time changing orientation of the meat to achieve crisscross grill marks. In other words, if your steak was positioned bottom left to top right, place it top left to bottom right. Cover the grill and give it another minute or so. Check for grill marks again. Flip, keeping the same orientation and switch to low indirect heat. On my three burner grill, I turn off the two burners that are under the stick and leave the third burner on the lowest setting. Just make sure to position your meat away from the burner that's on. Cover the grill and wait a couple of minutes for the steak to finish browning. While we're waiting, let me explain the reason behind all the flipping. Direct high heat is great at achieving grill marks, but it does terrible things to the texture of the meat, overcooking the outer layers by the time the center is done. Of course, we don't want to disturb our meat until we get grill marks, but as soon as we do, we flip it to the other side to distribute the heat more evenly and to reduce exposure to prolonged high heat. As soon as you get crisscross grill marks on both sides, we want to go as low and slow as possible and continue flipping our meat every 3-4 minutes. Take the temperature of the meat right after you get grill marks on both sides by inserting the thermometer sideways into the center of the meat. Just make sure you're not touching the bone. For this 1-inch steak, I'm aiming at 120 Fahrenheit. We're still at 85, so I'll give it a few more minutes. At this point, you don't need to worry about orientation of the meat since you already have perfect grill marks. You might think that 120 is a bit low for medium rare. You're right, medium rare is actually 130, but don't forget that the meat will need to rest about 7 minutes per inch of thickness once you take it over the heat, and during this time the temperature will continue to rise, eventually getting to 130. The thicker the meat, the longer it needs to rest, and the more the temperature will go up. So when I'm cooking a really thick steak, about an inch and a half to two inches, I take it off the heat at 115. Since the meat should go on a warm plate, I like to warm it up on top of the grill cover while my steak is finishing cooking. Here we go, it's 120 and it's ready to rest. What's that on top? <laughs> That's chive butter. Almost everything in life improves with a little chive butter. You can take all the guesswork out of resting your meat by leaving a thermometer in it. At first, the temperature will go up, but as soon as it starts to go down, you're ready to serve. Watch out, <laughs> it squirts. Actually, let me cut off the strip part of the steak so that you can get a good look at the inside. Ta-da! Perfectly medium rare, juicy and tender. Steaks don't like to wait, so let's wrap it up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss new cooking videos. And if you're ever in Boston, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.